Good morning. Welcome back. It's been quite some time since I've made a video. I'm taking a little break. I'm trying to just relax a bit. But we are back at the Plantiches Fishing Depot. We're heading to Sakarib. Again, one of my favorite places. It's me, Bianca, and our German Shepherd Kaya. Last time around it was mostly scenery and music when I made this video. So this time, I think I'm going to do a bit of kind of showing you how I camp, how I set things up, what gear I bring, how we light the fire, how we cook, just in case maybe you might be interested in doing something like this yourself. I want to see what it takes. So I think that can be kind of cool. I'm super excited. We have two nights and three days and we'll keep you up to date. By the way, if you're curious what it took to get here, we drove, well, our journey started in St. Vance. We drove for about an hour to get to the fishing depot. Cleve is going to be taking us on his boat to Takarib, which is, well, the sea is very calm, so it's like a 45 minute boat ride. And then we have to hike the stuff maybe 15 minutes um, to the spot. So our car drive hour-ish boat drive and like a 15 minute hike and we'll be there you see looking flat boy yeah, it's it real calm off um, he's a boss you would have seen some of the footage there going through the rocks we just kind of hug the coast going all the way up and yeah now we're here now there were some hunters set up in our usual camp spot so we're trying somewhere new this is what we got here this is this bag here is all shelter and kitchen camera gear some food supplies, grill, clothes. So that's what we're working with. Um, we're gonna set up camp now and I'll show you all around a bit more. All right, I have you guys on the chest mount, so you're not gonna see me, but hopefully you can hear me. You can see me. <laughs> and we're gonna set up. So we started off by clearing out a flat spot here, removing any hard things like almonds and coconuts, etc. And the first thing we're going to do is set up the tent. Always recommend, that's the first thing you do, because you never know when weather's going to hit, especially in the tropics. Um, 
Yeah, and the other thing you just want to look for on a camp spot besides a nice flat spot is are you going to be shaded and also how close is water. Um, you don't want to be walking too far to get your fresh water. And um, maybe most importantly that you have a nice view. So yeah, let's set up the tent. Okay. And just like that, tent is up. grill area, sit in, to chill out, cooler over there. We have our hammock up in the corner there for day chilling, take a little snooze. These are the stoves buried in the ground here. There's a burner that I'm gonna put on the top of them. A little beauty in stoves. Got my fishing rod. And then this is the tent. This is the main accommodations. Inside we just have sleeping pads, pillows, sleeping bags. That's pretty much it. And then the last piece of infrastructure is we have the top set up here. That's just so we don't have to keep all of the bags and stuff in the tent taking up space in case it rains. It also acts like a closed line. And um, if it happens to be raining for long periods of time and we don't feel like being stuck in a tent or we want to cook and we don't want to cook in a tent, we can come here. So that is pretty much us for the weekend. So we're going to make a little coffee. And people ask me all the time how we eat and cook while we're camping. Very simple. Butane cans, super cheap. This is like five dollars on Amazon, and it's a burner. This just screws onto the top of the butane tank, and you light it, and you got yourself a soap. Oh. Working like a charm. Talk about. I don't know, five, six minutes to boil. You ready? Rest on the ground because I don't want to spill it on your hands. Tell me when. Probably about half. I have another tip for you. Bury your cooler. It helps keep it insulated and in theory, the ice should last longer. But these are actually turtle tracks. 
probably leather back, turtles, they nest on this beach. So if we're lucky, maybe we'll get to see some hatchlings or a big mom laying some eggs tonight. Who knows? I think it's time to check in and give you an update. It's been a couple hours since I last filmed and um, yeah, I went and got firewood. Like I said, I would. It didn't actually end up raining though, but it's safely tucked away under the top just in case. Um, then it just got blistering hot. So me and Bianca were kind of just lying in the um, River. It is so insanely hot right now. Soaking for a while and um, now we've changed. Again, the bugs are pretty bad, so I've put on long sleeve, long pants. Um, I think we're gonna chill for a little bit. Oh, we made sandwiches. How could I forget that? So we had a couple of sandwiches, we actually had a couple of beers. This was a good spot. Um, went in the ocean twice, so quite a few things happened. Anyway, um, we're gonna relax for a bit, and then I think I am going to go and fish off the rock. Um, Bianca might go for a little walk. So, yeah, I mean, I am very new to fishing, but I'm quite excited. It would be sick if I can catch something <laughs> to put on a fire tonight. That would be like the ultimate for me. Um, but I have less than zero expectations, but we'll see what happens. And then, yeah, um, by the time we're done with that, it should be around sunset time when we'll start lighting the fire. And uh, yeah, it's about like almost four o'clock now. So it's been a very chill day. Excellent, excellent weather, but there's more to come. We got fish jumping guys and I am in the middle of rigging a line. No luck on the fishing as I kind of predicted. Um, I lost two lures out of four on the rocks. Got one hook up, spool started running and then I kind of slapped it out. Um, I guess that's more than I expected, but 
was really not expecting to lose the lures and I don't have very many left but uh, we're gonna go for a little walk down the beach it's almost sunset time and uh, we'll light a fire and I'll try again in the morning. Time to learn how to make a fire. Um, I've got the smallest pieces of wood I have, and I'm gonna get a couple other things, and I'll be right back. All right. So this method is called the um, volcano method. You need a newspaper, any kind of bottle, and then your wood, obviously, right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna twist up these sheets into ribbons like this, right? And then you're gonna twist them around the bottle and then do like a half hitch to tie them in a loop around it. And you're gonna stack this all the way up to the top of the bottle. So let's do that now. By the way, this is the same way you light a cool pot in Trinidad. I just do the same thing for a bonfire. Except instead of stacking coals around this, I stack wood around it. As you'll see in a minute. Alright. So it will look something like this, right? Now, you want to start with your smallest wood first and then it gets bigger as you go outwards. The smaller stuff will catch more easily. So you need that to get ignited first and then the smaller stuff will in turn light the bigger stuff on the outside. So I'm going to my pile and I'm looking for the smallest pieces I have. Now the other key to a fire is air needs to flow through it. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they just throw everything they have on the fire all at once and it just, it's like throwing a blanket over the fire, it just drowns it out. You also don't want to put too much tinder, like leaves and light stuff like that because it burns really quickly and then it turns to ash and then the ash sits down on top of the fire just like a blanket as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm stacking these twigs like this alternating directions all the way up and again I'm first layer is the smallest stuff I have so you're stacking them alternating now once I reach the top of the newspaper like this with my first layer I'll use slightly bigger stuff and we don't need to bother with the like square stacking anymore. We could just lean everything up against it. We just want it to be in contact so it gets some of that heat when we light that newspaper. Still, the smaller the stuff, the better. It's all just a matter how patient you are with the small things and not rushing to get this fire built as quickly as possible. Preparation is key. If you like rush now, and it doesn't work out first time you're gonna spend the next like hour fighting with this thing 
and it's going to be a nightmare. But if you take your time and structure it properly, you're going to have success. No. I hope I don't go about myself here because I do fail from time to time. But I am generally the designated fire guy at camp, so let's hope I don't embarrass myself. Let me get a lighter and I'll be right back. All we need now is a lighter, one more piece of paper, and our stack of bigger wood ready. What we're gonna do here is very carefully remove this bottle from the middle. You're gonna wanna try to make sure this whole volcano situation doesn't collapse while you do that, which could be a bit of a tr tricky situation. But if it does collapse, you could kinda just stack it back up. Um, you don't want to wrap the paper too tight because it makes the spot hard, which is exactly what I've done here. So, <clears throat> all right. So from here, we're gonna twist up one more. I folded it in half and then I twisted it, so it's like a wick. And then we're going to light it. And as you may have guessed, we just shove it straight down the middle. And it's going to light up that whole tunnel of newspaper there. As you can see. And we hope this works. Once it gets to like this point, you can actually throw a couple of your smaller twigs down the middle as well. Not too many. Again, don't overstuff it. You just want to get something more substantial and paper starting to get lit. There's a lot of heat in the middle there, so you know, it should, as long as everything's dry, it should catch. And we are in business firewise guys so yeah um, as it gets dark I'm pro obviously not gonna be filming um, if anything interesting happens you'll be the first to know pretty much the only interesting thing that could happen is maybe a leatherback sea turtle comes up to lay eggs um, actually I'll be the first to know yeah I'll we'll be the first to know but you guys will be next um, so you'll either see me in the morning we're gonna cook dinner now and then just chill out probably go to bed early You'll either see me in the morning or you might see me if a turtle comes up. Well, I told you guys, if anything interesting happened, I would inform you. Me and Bianca went for a little nighttime walk because it's like full moon and like incredibly bright, like crazy. I wish I could show you. Um, and we found some Caesars with hatchlings. So I just ran back to the tent to get my GoPro and I'm on the way back. wildlife guys you pull in towards Morning folks, 
to today too. Um, last night was kind of a tough one to be honest. Um, not a breath of wind, so it was hot and the sand flies were killing. So it was a tough night. I woke up three or four times and went for a walk. Um, we did see those baby turtles, which was cool. Um, I left Bianca sleeping in the tent. I'm gonna take a quick fish and then go back and make breakfast. But yeah, we're here. Um, I'm hoping tonight there'll be a bit more breeze and it'll be a bit cooler. That would be nice. But let's see what today has to offer. Holy sh Guys, are you seeing these jacks? Holy shit, I don't think you could see them on the camera. They seem to have been swimming along this shelf. Maybe I should... I don't know, I have a dive on. I don't want to get stuck on a rock. Oh, the jacks are back. Cast, cast, cast. I gotta get one here. Got to, got to, got to. Come on. My lure went straight through the fucking school. Oh, fish on, fish on. Fish. Oh, he's gonna take me in a rock. I need to tighten this drag. gonna bust me on a log I mean a f***ing rock mm. oh there so sad so done ah. oh, I literally have one lure left trying to decide if to just go back to camp I think I should I mean, there's fish right now, which is sad. I could re-rig the line, but realistically, these jacks are huge, and this is a light rod. Uh, they're just gonna bust me off again. I think we'll go back to camp and see what Bianca's up to. Okay, so we've made a decision to cut the trip short by one night. It was supposed to be two nights and three days, um, but frankly, the sand flies are insane. Um, also, we've had a really good day and a half so far. Saw a lot of stuff, you know, swam in the ocean, dipped in the river, saw hatchlings, sea turtles. I saw some fish this morning, got a hookup, lost it. Um, Kaya, the German Shepherd, has had a blast. So I feel quite satisfied. Um, and yeah, the bugs are just, it's rainy season, so the bugs are just terrible. So what we're gonna do, I organized for the boat to come back for us today. We're gonna hike to Madamas River, take a swim. We've already packed up the camp, so it's clear. And then, um, once we take a swim, we'll come back, have lunch, and then head home on the boat.
Guys, I found a little snake here. I'm actually not sure what type it is. Oh no, I scared him off by moving the bush. Sorry guys, I was gonna show it to you, but yeah, he just I parted the bush to stick the camera in and he went shoo, going. We've made it to Madamas River. We're a little short on time, so quick dip. And then we gotta head back to make lunch and uh, wait on the boat. But this is like one of the most beautiful places I've been in Trinidad, I think. It's just like this crystal clear blue lagoon. Best water to swim in. Maybe I'll get some drone shots. Hey, Baba. <laughs> Uh, you're just going in circles. How many circles are you going to make? One more? Well, I know that Madama's River swim ended abruptly. I crashed my drone into a tree and then the drone fell into the river. So I am not sure right now if any of the footage survived on the SD card. I guess you guys would know already. If you saw drone footage in the video, then wonderful. I'm super relieved. If not, then bummer, I guess. Um, anyway, we just got back to Grand Tac and the boat was already here waiting for us, so we're kind of rushing to take all the stuff back to the boat to head out and head on our way home. Um, it was a really good camp. We got blessed with a lot of really cool stuff. Also, a few challenges like the bugs and the heat. But, on the bright side, we got an awesome sunset, awesome sunrise, we saw turtles hatch, I saw a big school of cavalli or jacks, um, what else did you see, Bianca? Rainbow. Oh, rainbow, yeah. Kaya had a blast. Kaya spent like, most of the time just chasing kobos. So the and not bullying towards so a snake um, yeah overall great time so yeah thanks for watching like and subscribe if you enjoy and I look forward to putting out some more videos